Good morning, everyone. I am Lakshmi, your host and master of ceremony for the day. It is believed that a mark of wise man is to learn from others. Since we have limited life, we can gain a great deal of experience and save a lot of time for ourselves by learning from others. Reckoning this fact, and after the success of our previous session, Sikasa Banu decided to have another such opportunity for all the CA students, where you can interact with the rank holders, take certain tips and hints from them, not only to crack the exam, but also to secure marks in your exam. Before starting with the interactive session, let us invite the chairman of Sikasa, CA Srinima sir, to welcome our chief guest, CA Chandrasekhar Shetty sir, onto the dayas. Sir. 
even our rankers, once after achieving rankers, they will be very busy. But still, in spite of uh, when we requested to come and motivate our students, all the rank holders, they said without uh, any uh, ado, they said yes, we will come, we will motivate our students. Uh, they said, I welcome all the rank holders for this uh, program. <laughs> and budding rank holders also are welcoming for this program. <laughs> the intention, as I said, you should get motivated from the rank holders how they achieve this big task. Generally, the students once join the CA, the target above is the clear son of Okay, with that attitude, we'll start. That should not be the attitude. Once you listen, your rankers will come to know that you should aim high, you should achieve a rank, and the approach for this uh, getting a rank from each rankers is uh, very different one person to other person it may not be a similar even after this inauguration after chief guest address we will make an interactive session we will make a small team with each rank holder you will be interacting with different rank holders in a small team but i am telling you again the approach between one ranker to other rank definitely it will be different but never try to compare or don't try to change Totally your steady approach, what you are adapting it, okay? Why I am telling you, uh, for example, some of the rank orders they study only in the night, not in the morning. Some of the rank orders they study in the morning. And uh, the way of study, some, some rank orders will study only for 6 hours, some other person will study 12 hours, okay? It's not a uh, quantity, it's a quality. It depends on person how much you can how can you understand even if you study one hour or four hours? That depends on you. You should not change. Only thing, whatever better, whatever you can adapt and you should try to aim higher. That's what I can uh, tell. You should try to aim higher. Uh, you adapt which are similar qualities which you can adapt and you can achieve. You can adapt that. And after this interactive session, after one hour of interactive session, they will, uh, in, in that interactive session, they will sit along with you, they will discuss with you. After the interactive session, again all the speakers, uh, rankers and will come on to the dais. Then what we will do, we will uh, ask a question. Now. We have a set of questions, we will ask the rankers to address you people and in that uh, questioning session, if you have any queries which is not resolved in your interactive session, you can ask and you can get a solution for that uh, queries, then it will end. So, uh, ultimate aim of this uh, rank just meet, you should get motivated and get a rank for the Bangalore branch and yourself and come out with the flying colors. With this, I'll end my speech. Wish you all happy learning, audience. Thank you, sir. Life is a symbol of universal truth, knowledge and understanding. It acts as a guide keeping us from stumbling in the dark. To start today's event on this positive note, I would like to request the dignitaries on the dais to light the lamp and inaugurate this event. Yes, <laughs> 
okay the other like models part will be much much lower than that now let's come to intermediate new scheme anybody from new scheme intermediate okay fair enough so if you look at the marks here the top score was 94 fm and uh, normally my opinion group 2 accounts will be the high scoring so group 1 accounts is actually easy but it being the first exam extra tension extra pressure all those will be there so by the time you come to fifth examination your pressure would have been there but you know how to manage the pressure anyway it is an exam like that only chalta hai because initially we start with the high expectation after going to the exam hall first exam hall okay chalta hai just two minutes back i met one of my friends he said that I thought I will fail in the F, uh, SFM, that's why I didn't concentrate on the next paper, that's why I didn't pass the third paper. And SFM we got 64, he's here only. And some one of my friends, let us not take the name. So 64, this is what happens in CA exam, just two minutes back before entering the session. A person who thought he will fail, he got exemption in the subject. Please don't do that mistake and it has happened enough number of times. We normally think we will not get great mark, we will not pass, but we may end up getting high mark or at least we may pass. Just go and write the exam. I, I was mentioning in the previous session also that if you think the exam is tough, it's tough for everyone else. Everyone else cannot fail. All of the, there is no case where the CS has given zero percent result. It has never happened in the history. It will never happen. So if you think it is tough, be happy for it. Tell me why. So you know if the exam is tough for you, your friends also feel tough. And in the exam all you have seen so many people getting up and going after half an hour, one hour, etc. So you don't get up and go, you stay back, stretch, go for a little extension, your tension will become X. So stay there for 3 hours, so sit there because all your preparation for 6 months, 1 year, 2 years is just to play that 3 hours game. And that 3 hours if you are not able to sit, why the hell you are writing the examination, please ask this question to yourself. It may be tough, some of them would have felt very very tough, be extremely happy, if it is very very tough, just sit there, who knows, one or two times. The exam question number will have some out of syllabus question. And if you attempt that, there will be out of marks. You pray God daily that two questions will be out of syllabus. <laughs> Eight marks you get, 32 marks you get, you will pass. So why do you want to take unnecessary chances? Okay. So because it happened enough number of times, my teaching experience of almost 20 years, where people come and say, sir, I thought I will fail, I got 67. I thought I will not get good marks, I got 76. So please don't do that mistake. So here also, so look at the marks there, the top 3 rank for the marks so each person has got one subject above 90 it is definitely possible, definitely possible and don't judge one subject saying that I get 95 in accounts, accounts it may be any subject, if you look at that not even a single, not even a single subject has got 90 here if you look at it, so first rank order 94 in FM second rank order advanced accounting 95 and first rank order, third rank order 92 so it can be auditing, one of our friends who is sitting here she may share a little later she got auditing 95 okay so people can get any subject above 90 but a one or two subject above 90 work for it and other subject even if you some, get somewhere between 60 to 80 you will be definitely on the top 10 rank holders if you get two or three subject above 80 90 and other subjects somewhere 50 to 70 you will be one of the top 50 rank holders and 50 rank holders doesn't mean that it will be given only to 50 students it may be shared maybe approximately by 1000 people for example, he gets 700, he gets 700, I get 700, all of us will be given first rank. So, you don't think only 50 students will get a rank, I will not be the race. All of you can be a rank holder. This is a CA intermediate mass. Similarly, we have old scheme. Students are there? Yeah, fine. So, look at the mass there. So, consistently costing. That last examination, costing was easy paper. People have got 97, one person has got it. You just look at that, okay. May 18 as well as normal study. Costing, costing is normally high scoring, okay. High scoring, but you need to be extremely good at the mathematical skills. And even the low scores also you can just glance there. Even if you got some paper very less. See, second rank order got 47 in infotech. 47 in infotech, please observe this, okay. And in second rank order already, he or she. And third rank order is Cannot, there cannot be better inspiration than that. What third rank order is marking in product? Huh? If I got 39, he has to write the exam again. But just got 40 and uh, all in the third rank order. It is not mass printed by me, it is mass printed by CNC on the mass card. Okay, we are just copied. Third rank order got 40 on dot and see. But don't aim at 40. Don't aim at 40. Okay, I always say that if you aim at 40, by the time results will come January, February, time value of money will work. 
So even if you take 10 percent discounting factor, it comes out to 36. So aim at 100 only. Who knows that girl, girl or why would I aim at 100? But at least ended up getting what 40. So what I am trying to say is, some subject you may be extremely good, make the best you talk, use of it. Try to get 100, 100 out of 100. Last exam someone got November, I think 2017, CFL, SFM, 100 out of 100. Possible. So it is not impossible to see exam. 98 in ISCA, three, two and a half years back, someone has got. Everything is possible, only thing is you work for it. So if one subject is strong, make it 100 out of 100. If the other subject will be at least aim at 60, 70. So that even if you get somewhere around 40, you will be third rank order like this. Possible? Possible? Yes. Ah, but at the end of the day, you need to believe yourself. It is not a motivation session today. I will not speak much. Little bit of it all. Please believe in yourself because you are after telling this. No, that is possible for them, it is not possible for me. If you think that way, 100 percent is not going to be positive for you. I always say that. If you think positive, you are right. You are going to achieve something. If you think negative, you are right. But what use of that negative thinking? It is absolutely waste what I think. That's a thing positive. I will get 100 in all the subjects. Let me have a record. Record marker 700 out of 800 in CA exam. Who knows? It is possible. This time, CA intermediate 669 on the first rank holder mark. So, 700 is not far away from that. Fine. So, keep this marks as a base. You will be able to achieve anything and everything under the sky. CA final, new scheme. Only one exam, May 18, because of the first <coughs> exam. So, new scheme, first rank order marks. And if you see that, third rank order has got 90, but first rank order has got 88, and almost all of them have got somewhere in 50s. First rank, first three rank order marks I am talking about. Please look at it. So, 53, 55, 48. I hope you are able to see that. So, it is not that you need to be excellent in all the eight subjects, and we need not be perfect in all the eight subjects. That's the reason why even after becoming CA, we are not called perfect chart accountant. We are called practicing chart accountants. We are still practicing. <laughs> like the doctors practice, no? So we are also practicing. Okay, so even if the income tax return goes wrong, we will revise it. Not a big deal. So same way, you need to, you need not have to be perfect in all. But you, you work for 800, you may end up getting marks like this. So CFL, very big mark, and this is a normal scenario. Normal. And this is I am talking about the first three rank order marks. I am not talking about the 50th rank order mark, my dear friend. So please observe. If you get this much marks, you will be one of the top rank orders. And uh, CFL old scheme, old scheme, similar approach. So if you look at the marks, yeah, somewhere 50 is everybody has got. Okay, and highest score 100. You can see that 100 somewhere. Uh, it is not. I have printed it, my dear friends. You would have obviously known about it. 100 out of 100 is SFM paper. Which is possible. It's not impossible, I said. It's possible. You can name it. Now, our CS2 logo, I'm sure all of you know. Which is that word? Eagle. Are you sure? Yes, sir. Actually, not eagle. It's called mythical eagle in the Garuda. Okay? So, it's not actually eagle. So, it, it comes in Hinduism and uh, Buddhism. There's a beautiful bird which is above eagle. Okay? So, if you think that we eagle flies on the top, you try to reach little above that. That's what actually our institute says that Yayesha Sukhte Jagati, we had that discussion at the beginning. Now, if I want to get into the individual uh, course, if you look at CA Foundation, my suggestion mark, what are the marks you got there? But you try to get little more than that. If you are aiming at your rank, accounts, first paper, easy, chiller paper actually. I say it's a chiller paper. So easy, you can get 100. So under Agatha, CA final only someone has got 100. What is the big deal in kissing 100 in your uh, intermediate or foundation? It's possible. And I am not asking 100 out of 100. I am expecting 100 out of 120. It is a 120 mass paper. 20 mass chodo. We are not expecting that. 20 mass chodo. 20 not we don't want. What is the use of it? Okay. Let us get 100 out of 100, uh, one subject, not out of 400. And uh, second subject, maths. You should be extremely good. Maths is thinking. You are writing CA foundation. So you try to get a 100, if not at least end up at 95. Economics is a, sometimes maybe some portion like macroeconomics may be little bit uh, confusing here and there. That's why 10 marks chodo. You still get how much? 90. Law paper since it's a descriptive one, I know I not go high marks, you get what? 80, which is much much higher than the first rank order of May 2018. Okay. So 339 probably was the first rank order mark. So if you just aim at it, you'll be one of the rank order, top rank order. 
ये वजह से ये मेरे पास नो सर रैंक मुझे नहीं चाहिए रैंक मीन्स आई गेट एक्स्ट्रा एटेंशन स्टेज पे बुलाते हैं मुझे वो नहीं चाहिए ओके नो प्रॉब्लम इट विल वन सब्जेक्ट यू गेट नाइंटी अकाउंट्स आई एम टेलिंग यू एंड अदर्स टू सब्जेक्ट्स यू गेट समथिंग बिटवीन फिफ्टी टू सिक्सटी यू ऑटोमेटिकली पास टू सेवेंटी टू हंड्रेड पास मार्क सेवेंटी एक्स्ट्रा मार्क सर सो लेट इट बी देर नो इश्यू सो दिस अबाउट सी ए फाउंडेशन कमिंग टू सी ए इंटरमीडिएट न्यू स्कीम आई सजेस्ट वन सब्जेक्ट हंड्रेड Under the not a certain issue, get under. Maybe 98 you get. It's fine. 95 is another subject. 19 or even third subject. Accounts one, accounts two, costing and F. These are the four subjects you can always score. Even though some people have scored high as far as theory papers are concerned, you try that. And three subjects around 85 and two subjects 80. 700 is the whopping mark. Okay, you can aim at it. No sir, I don't want extra attention. I just want to pass. Two subjects you get 90. My dear friends. You must, all the places I am telling, one subject you must get 90. We have some experience where one of my CFL students, 7 subject 40 to 45, 46 was the last mark, 7 subject, financial reporting 97, she got both the groups clear. Okay, only one subject. That's why one subject it has to be the perfect. So, see intermediate, if you want, just pass 2 subject 90, 2 subject 70s, 4 subjects 50s. High achievement always takes place in the framework of high expectation. Expect nothing wrong in that. Come to CA final. You are aiming at a rank. One subject 95. You can get 100 also. Another subject 90. One more subject 85. Three subject range of 80, 70. Now the question is, moment we see this, we say, sir, is it possible or not? Go back and ask yourself your 10th and PUC marks. Last session also I told the same thing. PUC, our aim was to get 98%. 97.5 means so many girls cried. <laughs> Obviously, boys, 35% also, they were That's what it was. So, it was But the issue is, okay, POC, we are aiming at 98%. We ended up at 97 or we ended up at 99. When it comes to CA, suddenly our option is 40. Don't do that. You are ready, you are lowered your expectation. Why do you do that? So, you keep that high. PU 10th and Please go back and go back, go back and see your 10th and PU exam. 10th means one of the toughest exam. 10th means one of the toughest exam. Go back, the entire family was writing 10th along with us. <laughs> Correct no? And now if you look back, was it an exam? Absolutely not. You ask some of the rank holders sitting here. So they will say, before writing it was a tough exam. Now it is a YouTube exam. If you ask me, CA is a chiller exam. Compare with IIT. Compare with IAMs, okay? Our exam is nothing, okay? Only thing is we always compare with the 10th. Don't compare the 10th with CA, okay? So you compare the IIT etc. with the very GGP exam. Take it in that position, you will be able to. Because the moment I said this part, oh, 18 hours, I can see two, three faces, hey, chance I love. <laughs> if you think so, how can you see chance I love? Think it is possible, definitely possible. Fine. So, if you are aiming at only pass, two subject 90s, two subject 70s, other four subjects, 40 to 50, you get super. But don't aim at 40. Don't aim at 40. Otherwise, you will end up getting 33. One of the common marks which I have seen in ISCA paper of CA file. Okay. You ask anyone, Ella pass sir, 33 in ISCA. Okay. I don't know what the fascination towards uh, 33. Right. So, just to add on, iceberg, I'm sure all of you have seen. Okay. So, success in iceberg, what people see on the, what, what you call above the water level. But in, inside that, you require dedication, hard work, good habits. You will get some disappointment here and there. You will have some sacrifices. So many people are celebrating. Your family members are celebrating Ganesha festival. But you are sitting and reading. It's okay. It's okay. No problem. Okay. Next 50, 60 years of life. Every day if you want to get celebrated Ganesha festival. Not every day. Some sacrifice, something you should be there. No problem. So all these things below the water. What constitutes to look beautiful on the above the water. So... There are some inspirational quotes where some of you thought 90 is not possible, 80 is possible. It is impossible to climb the Mount Everest without legs, they said. But uh, early was enough to prove them wrong. She is an inspirational story, those who want to read. By mistake, she has been thrown out of a running train. Almost 48 trains moved through her leg. After that, she directly went to the camp for mountain climbing and she proved that it is possible. And it is impossible to dance, people said, without legs, sir. Sudha Chandra, most of you will be knowing that you can dance without legs. So we have by God's grace everything. Then uh, one of the brilliant inspiration, recent uh, incident, 
It is difficult to climb with Mount Everest with legs. But this person, first person to climb the Mount Everest without legs, rather with the artificial legs. We find it difficult to climb the third floor of CM Institute. But that gentleman without legs, Mount Everest top. And Rishabh Kapasi, almost 100% vision loss, cleared successfully as an inspiration to many. Many such stories. One of my friends, Dr. Radhip Manwani, visually challenged, but amazing person. The inspiration is international speaker, got award from the President of India, gold, you are the medley, gold medalist from the President of India. So all these are possible provided you think that you can. So just to look at the exam for the five minutes, give more importance to the concepts. Don't go for mathematics. Mathematics exam is not going to work out in CA. Conceptually clear, working notes are clear, disclosures are clear, presentations are clear, you will get out of it. A possible case, I write all the six and again the new scheme if people should be happy, you have to write only four, five questions. I hope you have gone through that, okay? Unlike old scheme where you are supposed to write a six questions. Assuming I write a new scheme, I write all the five questions perfectly tallied. Whereas my friend, he writes five questions, none of them are tallied, but his disclosure presentations are perfect. I don't have any disclosure, he will get 90, I may end up getting only 40. So very important, how do you present, how do you disclose, extremely important. Costing an FM paper, be a little more specific about your final answer also, that is important. But all the papers, your working note steps are extremely important. And prepare for the exam, I normally suggest anyway, it may be too late for you to go for a revision parcel. But nevertheless, you should have a three, three step approach, first exhaustive study, second is a revision and third revision just before the exam. Now, possible that you would have cleared only 80% of the syllabus, you would have completed only 80%, it's okay. Even with 80%, 120 marks into 80%, 96 marks, 95 if you get, we are happy, okay. So you don't have to think too much, sir, I have not completed what you call 100% syllabus preparation, that's absolutely fine. Give importance to the concept, go for second revision, go for third revision. Beautiful inspirational quotation. Don't keep your dreams in your eyes, they will wash away as tears. Keep them in your heart so that each heartbeat reminds you to reach your dreams. Always be positive, maintain yourself cool, work hard, work hard, 8 to 12 hours to 14 hours you read. Some people say, sir, I read for 4 hours a day. It's not, it's not, see exam requires 8 to 12 hours a day, minimum 8 to 12 hours. 14 hours you read, nothing will happen by reading. Nothing will happen. By not reading, so many things will happen. Okay? They say, just read. What happens? Let us say, some health issues here and there will come. That's okay. One month though. See, if your exam is in May 2018, 19 and onwards, take little extra care now. But if the exam is in November 18, take reasonable care of your health. But read. Read, read, read. By reading, nothing will happen. No health will go to toss. And put beyond 120%. What we think is, sir, I can put effort only for, what you call, 8 hours. Try little extra, try little extra, you will be able to reach the goal. Make a timetable and act upon it. Now, very interesting point about timetable. Sir, how many of you stick to your timetable? How many of you have the habit of putting the timetable for reading? Reading timetable. Others don't have timetable concept now. Oh, this is horrible. Okay. Please have the habit of putting a timetable. The second point is, how many of you stick to the timetable? 100% you stick to that. Very rare. One gentleman raises the hand, but in my opinion, we will put the timetable, but we will never be able to stick to the timetable. So what do we do next step? What is the use of putting the timetable? Put the timetable, <laughs> put the timetable but you will not stick to it. Then what do you use? That is a blunder you are doing. Two RMRs. Put the timetable, you will reach at least 80%. Don't put the timetable, you will not reach your 35%. So please don't stop putting the timetable. Put the timetable, work at least you will be almost nearer to that. We are almost nearer to that. That's what happens. Like, you are supposed to reach here by 10 o'clock. You say, Chanta, okay, 10 o'clock, I start at 10 o'clock, you say, doesn't go to work out. You start at 9 o'clock, you would have reached at 9.40, you would have reached at 10.15. The 15 is okay. If you think that, no, let me see if I get up tomorrow morning and then I will come. That activity is not going to work out. I hope you understand. Fine. Don't compare with others. Your preparation, you are unique as uh, Srinivasa was mentioning. Each rank order's approach is different, okay. You are unique, just like everyone else. You are unique, just like everyone else. Your preparation, your neighbor preparation need not be same. Your breath pattern is not same. Early morning and evening, you just check up whether you are breathing to the left or right, right or till. Your breathing pattern only keep changing every hour. Then how can you compare yourself with the, the neighbor? Don't do that. Then 
Remember the paper is, even if the paper is tough, I said, be happy, push shagir back If the exam is easy, be happy, because it's easy. If the exam is tough, be happy, because you are going to pass. Neighbors, they are not bother. So if the exam is easy, you are going to pass, be happy. If the exam is tough, be happy, because you are going to sit there for three hours. So neighbors may not pass. And consistently if you are seeing, even though we have the habit of saying CS student has not passed me, CS student has not given, I always support CS student as far as sir, what called past person is concerned, result is concerned. Maybe result presentation, except May 18, they were wrong in their presentation, that's okay. But they always give correct. If you take your own paper and if you value honestly, trust me, you will get 10 marks lesser than what CS student has given. That's what the way CS student. CS student valuation absolutely nothing wrong. Everything perfect, okay? Only thing is, we have to come to their standard. You cannot tell them, no, no, we are at the ground floor, you come down. <laughs> CS will never come down to ground floor. You need to reach that top. That's what's the requirement. And you have pressure? Enjoy the pressure, okay? What you should do? Enjoy. Pressure at chai. Without pressure, nobody works. And those my article students, you know, September 30th, night 11.30, around 10 returns will go. Correct, no tax rate cases, those who are working, you know. September 30th, night 11.30. Now, whereas earlier, it was not online, it was offline, when we were doing audition. 5 o'clock in the evening result is to be completed. 5 o'clock only. Whereas today, technology is there. Even then we wait up to 11.30 because they are excellent at the time now. Up to 11.30 or 12 o'clock. Okay. So please enjoy. Enjoy the pressure. And you see September last one week, you will have huge pressure. You enjoy and you complete the job. Correct? Those who have done the artificial, you will understand. Those who are not done, you are going to understand. <laughs> no problem. Yeah. Yeah. Watch your, this is my favorite quote. This is what you are supposed to do for the next one of two months or maybe six months. Watch your thoughts for they become words. Watch your words for they become actions. Watch your actions for they become habits. Watch your habits for they become character. Watch your character for it becomes destiny. So what is important is thoughts. Start with a good thought. Swami Vivekananda statement. Man is made up of his thoughts. And he said after Chicago summit the great success. He said, I train my mind in such a way that no impure thoughts come to my mind. So even Swami Vivekananda used to get negative thought, wrong thought, impure thought. He used to train that. We are all normal human being. If we get a wrong thought, negative thought, etc., it's okay. But keep on training, training, training so that uh, you will get the best out of your thinking process. So just to conclude, a small uh, inspirational story of Albert Einstein. I am not very sure whether it is Albert Einstein or Newton, may not be relevant for us. Albert Einstein failed 999 times before he got around 1000 plus patents being registered in his name. So let us not worry about the failure, it is okay. So that gentleman, the inspiration was a little bit of funny intended. When he, he was there at that time, two points you should note. One, point number one, Google was not there. All of you aware of Google? And second point is there is no photo technology like photo. So, for example, if I say this is Chandrasekhar Shetty sir, people used to think Chandrasekhar Shetty because there is no photo technology. Now, with this background, a small incident happened. One day Einstein was very, very dull. His driver came and asked, sir, he used to be very active and energetic. How come today you are dull? Einstein says, see, I invented something. This invention, I have to go and give a speech. And that's what used to happen. They used to go and give a speech, lecture, to spread the awareness about this invention. And today is my 200th speech. Same topic, 200th times. So don't you think you get bored? It's monotonous. So it's boring to talk again and again on the same thing. But what would I have committed? The driver, a nice gentleman, he says with humbleness, Sir, I attended all your sessions, all 199 sessions. So I have almost by heart in what you spoke. If you don't mind, I will act, I will dress up like a Albert Einstein. You come and sit like a driver there. Because people don't know, people will not be knowing whether it is Einstein or whether it is a driver. So immediately Einstein said, what nonsense, a great event, how can I speak? No sir, actually I listened to your uh, speech, so I have wired it, if you want, I will give a demo. He came in the house only, he gave a demo. Einstein was impressed, wow, brilliant speech, he spoke almost like Einstein only. Oh, brilliant. Then Einstein had a doubt. Sir, if, uh, sorry, he asked the driver, if someone asks a doubt, what will you do? He said, what sir, same old doubt, same old question, I know, let us go, sir. <laughs> they went. So, Einstein sitting in the car as a driver, like a driver, and driver like a Einstein. He gave a speech, everybody said, wow, 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 wow brilliant. And some same question, same answer. One student asked a slightly different question. 
which obviously driver will not make. But look at the presence of mind of this uh, driver. He said, what GGP question? Even my driver can answer. Hey, driver, get up and answer. So, that is what we require for all of you, okay? Whenever the examination comes, just think out of the box. Just sit there, sit for three hours, sir. Whatever you like, 99.99% is going to be the perfect answer. So, God bless each one of you. I expect to meet, meet each one of you as a members of the CA community at the earliest. Thank you for the opportunity given. All the best. Congratulations to each one of you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the light-hearted and scintillating words. Coming to the much-awaited part, introduction of the rank holders. Just give me two minutes. in IPCC, an ambitious and a determined individual aspiring to become a chartered accountant by the age of 21. He comes from a family background where no one has taken up this challenging course and will be the first chartered accountant in the family tree. An all-rounder whose hobbies range from sports to logical puzzles and sketching for which he has won national level competitions at Dubai, currently pursuing BCom Finance and Accountancy from Christ University and has pursued five months of articleship at Deloitte. Please put your hands together and welcome Deepak Acharya. Uh, a chartered accountant by profession who has secured IPCC and CA final 11th and 46th rank respectively and a teacher by passion. She believes that victory loves preparation and when preparation becomes a habit, victory too becomes a habit. A finance professional with inclination towards constant learning and development. She started her career by joining a startup. She is also a diploma holder of International Financial Reporting Standards from ACCA, UK, and has completed CFA Level 1 with 90 percentile marks. She has been actively involved in helping more than a thousand students to achieve their dreams of becoming finance professionals by taking up teaching and conducting motivational sessions. Let us join together and give a warm welcome to CA Priya Kane. and a carnatic music singer who has won consistent topper and top achiever, secured 7th rank for the state and stood first for Mount Kamu PU College in her Karnataka PU exams held in the year 2016. She secured All India 43rd rank in IPCC exam in November, currently pursuing second year of BCom in St. Joseph College of Commerce and articleship in KP Rao and Co. Please put your hands together and welcome Prabhavi. Another next rank holder is a qualified chartered accountant in 2018, securing All India second rank in CA final and All India 42nd rank in CA IPCC. He was the second high, highest in costing an FM paper. He is a BCom graduate from Indira Gandhi National Open University and a graduate from Christ Junior College. He was technical head of student welfare office at Christ Junior College, managing a team of 15 volunteers conducting intra and inter college fest. He was also nominated as the best student in his school, a trained actor from An Actor Prepares, an acting and theatre institute for renowned television actors. His interests are reading, current affairs, investing and trading, acting, sports and training and conducting fest. Let us welcome CA Abhishek Nagaraj with a big round of applause. in intermediate and 14th rank in final. He secured 7th rank in Karnataka PU exam. He served as an article assistant at Ernst & Young providing services like tax consultancy services across insurance, power automation, investment funds, etc. He also worked on FEMA litigation and income tax related compliances. He has also worked on several assignments under undertaking the impact of GST on existing business model and suggest sustainable changes to leverage on GST. 
in recognition of his efforts and he received the extra mile award an award at ey recognizing and appreciating young talent he has also been a part of student welfare office for kais junior college he was one of the core committee members in google core committee he has won several awards for presentation at model un and including best position paper without further ado let's welcome ch mehul mehta with a round of applause she completed her article ship from kpmg and secured all india 38th rank in ipcc may 2015 and all india 29th rank in ca final please put your hands together and welcome our next rank holder ca nandika our next rank holder is a guitarist as well as a vocalist aspiring to become a musician apart from studies His own, he has his own music production and is one of the top 20 singers of Bangalore in Bollywood music project. He also secured third rank at Joseph's and has record of securing 100 in economics and a scorer of 50th All India rank in November 2017. Please put your hands together and welcome Kamal. Secured 13th rank in CA IPCC and 37th rank in CA final. Our next rank holder completed her article ship from Basan and Sampan LLP. She received Corporate Citizen Award for from her firm for the for her time management skills and managerial attitude. Participated in and won in several inter school and inter college allocations and debates, including second prize in state level inter school Kannada debate competition held in the year 2012. She was also a part of Youth for Seva. Let us welcome CA Sheetal with a big round of applause. They say life is like riding a bicycle. To keep your balance, you must keep moving. And that's what made our next rank holder come to this garden city from God's own country. He has secured All India 25th rank in CA final and has been a con constant rank holder in his school and college days. Without further ado, let's welcome our next rank holder, C. H. V. Hari U. Our last rank holder for the day, C. A. Ashish. He is currently the assistant manager at Indi for indirect tax at Deloitte. He secured All India 25th rank in C. A. Final on November 2017. He also completed his B. Com from Jain University. Please put your hands together and welcome C. A. Ashish. Now that we have introduced all the rank holders, um, I proceed. I request Shrinivas sir to uh, tell the fu future proceedings how it will go. Thank you. Now uh, we will have an interactive session. We will make a small team. Okay, each team will be led by one rank holder. You will just form a circle among yourself. If that door also will open. Make it 10, uh, 8 or 8 students and 9 students approximately. Make one small circle. Among that, once the uh, banker will come and sit and will interact with you for one hour, you can clarify your doubts.
it will be open to the guys, okay? So, first question, I'm, I'm pretty sure everyone agrees that hard work is required, but uh, there's no doubt like these are the right people to tell like how hard work is, wh what is the actual hard work that these people have gone through. So, so like how important is hard work for CA? There's no doubt about hard work is important, but it is, it, it, it is that key thing that makes you different. So who want to go first? Can you have mic? So, good afternoon everyone. Uh, firstly, uh, since each one of us are unique here, so our level of retention, our level of presentation skills or grasping power, everything is different. So, hard work is essentially the base for everything. So, unless you put forth your efforts, nothing will come easily for you. Moreover, since I said each person is unique, the level of hard work that each and every one of you have to put varies. For me, I started off with my exam new by putting 8 hours of study every day. It's not possible for any person to study 16 to 17 hours from the first day of exam day or from the first day when he's opening the book. So, start off with 8 hours or something and gradually increase your pace week by week by an hour or so. By end of, when I had almost a week or one month for my exams, I was conveniently like studying for 15 to 16 hours a day. So, moreover, hours, somewhat back in this, but the uh, number of hours that you put forth itself is not a de uh, determinative factor for your efforts, right? So based on your level, just assess yourself, go through a SWOT analysis. Analyze all your strengths and weaknesses based on that, put forth your efforts. And uh, I would like to quote the Bhagavad Gita which says, Karmanyam Aptikaraste Maa Parishu Kadashuna That is, put forth your efforts, whatever comes is a fruit of uh, your efforts. That's it. Uh, one thing I agree with what Shikhar was mentioning, then I would just like to add one point here. In fact, uh, sometimes we go with the notion that, you know, if I put in 8 hours, 10 hours, I'm good to write the exam, I'm prepared. But it is equally important that what you do with those 8-10 hours is effective. Okay, so while hard work is the most critical factor here, it should also be that your hard work is not going for a waste. Okay, it has to be effective. So make sure that whatever energy effort you're spending is channelized and it's, 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 it's something that you can bank on. And not that, you know, just because everyone's studying for 8-10 hours, I'll also sit in front of the book for 8-10 hours. Like, it's not as simple as that. Okay? So you have to be very cautious and careful of what, you know, you're doing. Yeah, we'll go next. Okay, okay. So I think uh, there is one add-on uh, question which talks about being smart. Uh, we have heard we are supposed to be like hard working, but there is, there is one small factor of being smart also. Like you would have seen when you, to, you when you pe people spoke to the bankers, they, they were smart in one way or the other. Like you people always felt like, okay, this guy is getting this rank only because he is smart in this way. So those key things, what do people want to give for these people? As a takeaway, how smart is important? How smart working is important with your hard work? Yeah. Uh, good afternoon. Um, I always believe that more than hard work, smart work uh, makes more sense. Uh, only because, see, I will give you an example. There might be chapters where you will have to put in ten hours of work but then that will come for 2 marks. Would you really want to do that or if at all you can put in that 10 hours of work somewhere else where you can probably get which is, uh, you know, which has a weightage of 10 marks. Which makes more sense? The, uh, the 10 marks for 10 hours uh, makes more sense, right? Also, one more thing that I uh, did in my uh, final, uh, the first paper, FR paper, I'll just give you an example. Uh, there was this question on financial instruments and they asked me to, um, you know, for, do you guys know how it works? We basically we just had to calculate a present value of it. And the interest that they had given was very minimal, that is like some 50 rupees per year. So I just wrote a note saying, uh, assume that this is uh, immaterial, so I am not going to do that, I will only do the end part of it. So there I might have lost around 2 to 3 marks. But I could use the same time 
to do something else which could have fetched me 10 marks because it would have taken the similar amount of time. So this way you have to take judgment calls on how and what not to do and what to do in what quantity and the quality also. Because there might be a lot of case laws which you would want to mark up but do you really think that's really that important other than probably missing out on one big chapter, you will have to take a So that way you will have to plan yourself and also plan your studies in a very smart way uh, to ensure that you cover everything but in the required quantity. And also it helps that uh, institute has already given you uh, the guidelines on weightage and also skill wise uh, weightage. So that way you can analyze what will actually come because see one thing is learning for like to know, like the knowledge part of it. And the other is you also have to clear CA. So you have to first understand the uh, entire subject and also realize okay this might not be that important, this might be more important. So you'll have to structure your studies that way. So yeah, uh, hard work and smart work goes in hand to hand. For example, what I um, had applied during my studies was always I had one mind while preparing in that uh, during my IPCC classes, always the thing I had in mind was that you just have one and a half days before your in between each of your exam. So you have to make it a point that you are going to cover everything. You can't cover the whole textbook in one and a half day. So what is the next best alternative you can do? You can probably create a few summary notes what uh, will, what you can refer during those one and a half days and recollect all the concepts. So that requires hard work in the initial stages. But that leads to a smart work. You are hitting, you are taking a smart logical approach towards your end preparation. So that was that. That was the smart work which you can apply in your exams. So, I mean, I thoroughly agree with what my friend told, right? Like, both of them should go hand in hand. Right? We cannot say that smart work can be a substitute to hard work, no. To know how to be smart, you should put in the first hard work, right? For example, when my friend told about uh, the question, like some part of it you choose to answer and then leave the other bit, right? To analyze that, that you can be in the same time, amount of time, you can answer a question of like 8 to 10 marks and getting the 2 3 marks here. You should have put in your hard work much before that you are able to take that judgment call that it's better to answer this than that, right? So hard work cannot be substituted at all. I am a firm believer of efforts and I always believe that, you know, the results that you get are in uh, proportion to the efforts that you put in, right? So initial days, be sure that when you are doing your first reading, be exhausted and complete and that itself will help you plan your revisions better, plan your days before, just before the exam better. So I would say both of them complement each other, right? So first thing is just the efforts completely, first exhaustive study and your subsequent revisions will get smarter. The direction of your efforts is very important. That's where you need to be very smart. There's no substitute over hard work, but there is always a quantity and quantity, uh, quality and quantity trade-off. With that point, like I would uh, ask in the next question, like there is always planning, like as you said, even in exam, like with that three hours of pressure, still you plan to choose which to write, which not to write, and how to write it also. So like it's not just during exam, like you would have planned so well before exam also. Like what are the planning that you people get? Uh, hi. Um, so again, planning is the most important part of this entire process of uh, preparation, which I would say, because uh, again, planning is uh, relevant, um, or rather, it works only when you know your strength and weakness. So when you know what you're weak at, you will obviously need more time to prepare for it. So from the beginning, you start planning about, uh, so for example, suppose if you are five months away from the exam and you know by what time you want to complete your first exhaustive 
uh, you know, study. So for that you need to have a proper timetable which I would really suggest and have a plan about when you are going to start this and when you are going to finish this. And I was preparing a daily and a weekly timetable because obviously things will, I mean you will have to keep revising it because there are going to be so many issues which are going to come up but again you should know what, how much time you are spending on each uh, subject or chapter or whatever respectively but uh, planning is the most important thing because in the end if you are if you're just going to pick random chapters or random cha cha uh, subjects and going to study and in the end you are nowhere you don't know how much you have completed, you don't know how much you actually know so to know where you are, to have a proper plan and to stick by the plan is very important. So before you start or if, if you have already started, make sure that you have a plan in future. So I don't know what she said. I think uh, along with planning, you should also keep a target uh, mark, I mean mark score that you want to achieve in a particular subject. I mean, passing is everybody's objective. I mean, getting a rank is also the objective of many of us. But to break it down into specific targets, that will uh, train and tell the mind to work towards it, and automatically the work will come. I mean, suppose for example, the eight subjects in CA final, or break it, I mean, break the total marks in such a way that you have a target for each of the eight subjects. For example, FR, I want to score 65 or whatever. Whatever is Again, as, as she told, it is based on your strengths and weaknesses. So, of course, strengths you may tend to get more, more marks. So, of course, you want to score at 65 or 70, or like Sir said, if you want to score at 100, if you want to aim at 100 or 100, you can always do that. That depends on your capability. So, once you have a uh, subject wise target of how much you want to score, what happens is your uh, mind and your body automatically works towards it. I'm not just telling it because. I have others, but I have seen others doing this as well, and, it, and it's really worked because maybe first month of, of course, you have four months of study before your files or whatever. You keep revising your scores, and what happens is, as I said, automatically you start working towards it, and the end result will definitely be more or less as per your targets. Uh, I would just make a quick point here what the people have already said is. So your planning should be such that, so all of us, the, the, I think the saddest part about all of us planning is that we start with a notion that is subject to change. Okay, that's why we start on a very tight note. The minute you make a plan, make sure that you don't have any notion that you know this will change. The only notion should be that I will stick to this no matter what happens. Okay, and when you have that notion, you set it up as a proper stick life for yourself, you will definitely work towards it and achieve it again. But when you, when you start with the read back attitude that you know, maybe I'm going to push my time table, and maybe I have to make a new time table in a few days, you will never be able to reach it, and you will keep blaming the time table instead of blaming yourself. Okay, so that is very important that you know, you draw that line that I have to stick to it, and it is a very serious thing, rather than just to think because I'm doing it as a formality. And I think the quick point to that is that your, your time table should be in such a shape that, suppose your friend calls you up and tells you that I have a doubt in accounts in this particular chapter, okay? You should be able to tell him or her that I will be doing this chapter in the, in the second week of October or third week of October. Like that's the kind of planning you should have because that will give you an insight about where you are every day, how much progress you are making on a day to day basis, and that will make sure that you stick to it. Because the minute you start deviating, you will start stressing yourself. And that is itself enough for you to carry on and you know, uh, come back to the deviation. I mean, get away from the deviation and come back to the time. Adding to what you said, um, what everyone said rather, planning is very important pre-exam, but planning your exam paper is equally important. So you have about five to six questions to answer out of six or seven. So you have to answer basically time each question. So you know on average 30 to 35 minutes per question. So when you read your question paper the first 15 minutes, you need to identify which questions you can answer fast, which questions you know will take time. So you balance it out. You can, if you can answer one of the questions in 25 minutes, that saves you 10 minutes. And you can spend that 10 minutes on another question which you know will take time. Example, the first question is always long. Right? We always start with the first question and we get stuck. And then one hour goes there. So instead of doing that, you start with the second or third question where you know you will be able to finish it within your time limit. 
and then spend that extra time on that question one which you know you need. So then also there is planning. In addition to planning your studies, planning the exam because eventually five months of studying boils down to three hours and the three hours is what matters. Just a quick point to add, while planning, don't be over ambitious. Don't, uh, you know, say I will study 8 hours a day, 12 hours a day from day one, and I will study all seven days a week, I will not take breaks, I will, you know, not go for a movie, I will not do this, I will not do that. Don't do that. Be very practical while planning, so that you don't have to revise it later. When you are very practical, you will know that, okay, this is where I have to be at this point in time, and which is the most practical thing that you can do. If at all you are doing anything lesser, you will already feel the guilt that you are not doing good. And also there are times where, you know, here and there things might change. But I am trying to say that, uh, if at all things do change, make it up in the next 2-3 days or in the next week. Like have a long term plan, like a 4 month plan, 5 month plan, have a 2 month plan, have a monthly plan, have a weekly plan, have a daily plan. So at least if the daily plan does not go well, at least in the week, if your plan is fit, it's cool. It's not an issue. Again, the same way, if the weekly plan is a little slightly up or down, at least in the monthly plan you have to be up, up there. Right? So have break the plan into phases. So even if you have to revise, it's not that you actually go revise, it's just that you make slight adjustments. Probably you put in a little more hours today, probably you put in less hours tomorrow, that way. Just don't be over ambitious and have different phases of planning. Just to sum it up, like, can I can I make it a like, strength and weakness has to be based on your subject targets and based on your subject targets you are, you can't be over ambitious and if you are not ambi over ambitious you are not going to blame yourself. Just to sum up all four of you. Yeah, like with this, uh, there, there's next question now. No matter who whom you go talk to, they always say like, there's a lot to retain. The, the syllabus is so huge. How do you people retain it? Like, how do you do it? It's it's always a myth for many people. Like, it's it's not. It's always a uh, uh, a, a big uh, thing, a suspicious thing to outside world and uh, being a big challenge for all of us here. So, how do you people retain such a huge syllabus? So, uh, everybody knows the vastness of CA final, especially like. There's eight different subjects and there's so many things to study, especially like a DT or an IDT. Where there's different uh, sections and there's rules and there's much more beyond that. And how are you going to remember everything? The whole point is that the biggest secret is not everybody remembers everything. It's just smart study at the same time. You need to realize what you have to remember, what you don't have to remember at the same time. What you need to know, only some aspects of and what you need to know perfect at the same time. So if you can folk understand that this has more weightage, and this is what I'm supposed to study properly, then you retain those aspects perfectly and then the rest of the stuff you try to focus lesser on. And how do you retain what's actually important at the same time? Not everyone can actually remember every point that they've learned uh, in the first place. So the more number of revisions that you do, the better you'll get at it. So if you can't remember it the first time, the second time you read it again. If you can't remember it the second time, the third time. The fourth time, for sure you're going to remember it. So it's not just about that you can't do it, it's about how long it takes you to remember but it's possible to remember everything at the same time. So I don't know what he said. So I have this example which I was interacting, I told my few of my friends. So one of my friend, he kept four months for uh, in-depth studying and only one month for revision. And he ended up studying for almost one and a half months in-depth studying and he could not revise anything and he could not retain whatever he studied. That's the problem with us. We sometimes tend to go into the subject so much that we forget that we need to retain, we need to revise. Revision is the key. Uh, so the number of the revision varies according to the person. So I might, I took two revisions to retain whatever uh, I studied. So it depends on each of the person. As I earlier mentioned, you have to do a SWOT analysis of yourself. You need to know your capability. So I had this problem with the information system control audit retention. So the first one, I used to study every day two hours. And the second month, I, when I tried to recall, I was hardly able to recall any of the things that I studied. Again and again I studied, I didn't give up. So it doesn't come easily. Some of the subjects might not come to you easily depending upon your weakness. So you have to continuously revise. Continuous revision is the key and uh, there is no shortcut for that. So that is how you retain. And one more thing is you need to have short notes uh, to retain stuff. 
you might end up reading thousand pages book. You might be a perfect uh, perfectionist with respect to the thousand pages book. But when it comes to that one and a half day, can you complete the thousand pages? Can you retain whatever is there in the thousand pages? No, right? You need to have short notes that will help you to retain the stuff. Uh, also, one more thing is, if you know the concepts, you don't really need to retain everything. You know the concept, right? So you don't have to retain the entire formula, you don't have to retain the every every step of the way. It's just, if you know the concept, you can derive it in the exam if you don't remember also. So in that way, what I would suggest is, maybe if you have come up, you know, if you have a formula, try to derive it yourself. Try to find a logic to, you, to, to write yourself. When you do that, even if you don't remember the formula, because you know the logic, in the exam also you can derive the formula and get done with it. Though you will take 5-10 minutes more, but at least you will get the formula right. And the other thing, uh, in cases like DT or law, you might find it quite hard to remember the provisions. What would actually help in that case is, imagine your uncle is with somebody, right? Like, let's say he's an NRI. Foreign Exchange Management Act, try to relate it with him. If you relate things with your family members, your close friends, it helps you retain much better than just reading it. Than just saying, okay, NRI cannot buy whatever, immobile property in India. Than just saying, my uncle cannot buy immobile property in India. You will retain it better, right? So try to do that. Wherever possible, don't come up with random stuff, but try to do that like, on a practical note. Try to apply it practically so you don't have to remember anything. You just have to think of that person and it will come to you automatically. Basically, as CA goes, uh, like there are few subjects or at least a few parts of the subject which test our concepts. The concepts are zero point marking or as you already know. But there are like few other subjects which are like points based. Like, there are basically all bullet points. So, what you can do for that is uh, maybe identify the first letter of each bullet point. This is the technique which I use. And make some story. Like, suppose there are like five points and it's random, like B, R, M, S, or whatever. So you just make up a story like deep power cases, math, science, whatever. It's something which you can relate to. So, and another thing is, even my roommate, he was also doing CA. So, this auditing, there's a chapter like vouching verification. So, it's basically just bullet points and it's like, there are few theoretical subjects which make sense. Like, there are like few provisions of the act. It, like, if you were the maker of the act, you'd be in this position and you will be like, yeah, this is a legal, he has to be penalized for that. So, there are like, in theory, it's basically one set, like mugging up, one which makes sense, which you can actually think about it. But for the mugging up thing, like as I was saying, my roommate, even he is doing CA. So, what we both thought was during lunch time or something, we keep like, uh, we keep a target of like five questions. So, we go through five questions each. So, it's like we set a time, let's say half an hour. So six minutes each question, we go through each, each question and we ask each other like point. So, you know, this we did for like two months and this way we could actually remember the whole chapter and this chapter actually came for 16 months. There's actually a pattern, right? So, this chapter always comes for 16 months and like company on it, like a colleague always comes. Like those things you can keep discussing with your friend. That way you can actually remember it even better. Uh, I didn't only said, right? So just what do we do with practical subjects is we try to find logic, rational behavior, anything that we're doing. Uh, while we don't do this with theory subjects, we try to face problems with theory subjects. So the minute you start applying the rational to what you're thinking, your theory subjects become much easier. Okay? So for instance, if you have director's provisions and CA panel or you have something that you know, setting up a company in the IPCC level. The minute you start, you know, put a process of, you know, thinking why it's needed. Is it, what happens if this law, I mean, this provision shows not there, this section shows not there. It becomes much easier for you to, you know, uh, kind of connect and remember things. So you don't actually spend efforts in remembering it, because you know that it has to be there. Otherwise, people will, you know, find a loophole and start doing this. Okay, so the minute you start doing that with theory subjects, the theory subjects become much easier. That is one thing I would like to mention. Second thing is, uh, the, the only mentioned but summaries and flowcharts are very, very, very like, high importance. 
So, uh, generally what we do is, because people have asked us to make summaries, we read out everything that we put in. That's not a summary. That's just work back and writing it again. Okay? A summary is something which, you know, probably a five pages coming down to one, one and a half pages, with all of the points which, are, which were there here being repeated here, but not in as much depth. Okay, so that is very important. So next time when you read that one and a half pages, it's as good as reading the five pages you read like some days back. Okay, so that's the that's a description of a good summary. So make sure you have good summaries and flowcharts, try to make flowcharts, lot of flowcharts available online also, try to leverage them and see how you could make best use of them. Listening to the audio classes or uh, evisionary audio clips which are available maybe on YouTube or maybe on tuition classes or something. So for some subjects which you think you need to revise it on a daily basis or something, maybe you're on traveling or you may be, I mean, towards the end you end up having so much lack of time that even when you are eating you have to listen to the audio and eat and it's what you should do towards the end. Maybe it doesn't work with everyone but with me it really worked that what happens in, I mean, if you listen to audio is that in the exam hall, say the same concept or, or the question comes, we can actually hear it in our ears and automatically we start writing. So, it is like an open book exam, I mean, yeah, in that one way, audio clips, I cannot guarantee 100% efficiency, of course, you will be thinking of something else when you are traveling or when you are reading, but even if it works for 20 to 30 percent, you are making, out of nothing, you are making 20 to 30 percent of I mean, time. So that is one thing. One more thing is, when you are uh, reading your, uh, reading, the, reading the study mat or your books, you should uh, see the uh, where it is presented. I mean, where it is presented as in, I mean, for example, well, this, is, uh, this is a book. And suppose, suppose a question, I mean, it has to start from here and it goes on up to here. If you have, a, have it in your memory, then the question starts from here. Yeah, kind of an eidetic memory. What happens is, the same book, I mean, it is your book at the end of the day. So you have to highlight it or scratch it or whatever you want. You have to do it in a book so that you remember the page and the, the content in, I mean, the uh, arrangement of the content. So what happens is, in the exam again, the same page, I mean, the moment you see the question, the page is what is opening your mind. So if there are five points, I mean, this, this was only for the end. For practical, it has to be the conceptual knowledge. For theory, what happens is once the page or the structure of the page is open, we know there are two points in this page and three points on the right top side. So what happens is automatically you get the link between the five points and then you can somehow relate it and uh, yeah, we collect and write the answers. After talking uh, so much of memory, I want to ask Rankers, any of you use mind mapping techniques like Victoria? Mind mapping techniques, we are using it just with people, you know, one or two sentences. So while I was texting, I spoke about this, right? So this is very, very important. Okay? I think uh, towards the final, you know, your packet, just to put the exam, nothing is of more critical essence than these mind maps or flowcharts. Okay, why I say that is because in like those one or probably two sides of sheets that you take or probably eight, three sheets that you take, the entire chapter level is you. Okay? And because you've already done like one or two readings already, you know the content. It's just that you're not able to place it in your head correctly. So the minute you look at the headings or the way these mind maps are structured, automatically you start recalling all what you read in very quick time. So without putting too much effort, without spending too much time, it's all done for you. Okay, but the most important battle that we know we should conquer while we're preparing these mind maps is that it has to be exhaustive. By exhaustive, not in terms of volume, but in terms of coverage. It has to cover every single aspect that has been covered in your book, okay? So everything should be there. And there might be some points which technically should not cover your mind map, okay? But because you're struggling to remember those points, you can take like a brief, you know, small note of those points somewhere in your mind map as well. So that you keep looking at them, you keep demanding them. And you keep looking. So a lot of my friends, like especially in my group, also, my friends use these fine maps and they spread across their rooms or their walls. So, you know, unconsciously also, I mean, I mean, not unconsciously, but without 
be cautious also we were looking at it every day repeatedly over one or two months and it automatically started registering in that head so that's the importance of it without realizing that you are trying to remember something you are automatically remembering something ok so that's that's what these mind maps are useful for you can also make like a small place on these mind maps for keywords like some chapters are very important keywords or you can make you know like for things like uh, samples and auditing and all of those things these flow charts are of very 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 good use ok so try to make the most of this and I think it gives you a very good landing hand So just to reiterate the fact about uh, short notes, summary notes and the, the mind map notes like as I said like th there is always a uh, creative technique of just sticking those important points on your uh, floor or on your just wall somewhere where you can see and your subconscious mind just recalls everything every day like what are the things that other than this like it's a so tailored way of doing it for himself like what are the other things that summary notes of course you people specified about the fact that you people add the short notes but what are the things that you people had such unique techniques to have to recall everything? Like is there anything other than this that we can One was uh, whatever she had said, audio clips. So what I did was few of the chapters wherever I felt difficult, okay, difficult or I felt now I'm understanding that particular concept, maybe after few months I'll be not able to recall that particular concept. So if I understand it immediately, I'll switch on the sound recorder, speak to myself, record my voice and whenever I'm free, I'll switch on the sound recorder and listen to my own voice. So the most effective way is to listen to your own voice telling it right. So more you listen to your own words like coming out of that particular mobile phone or anything, you will you tend to remember. So that I did for theory subjects, especially for problems of law and the information system control audit because immediately I was able to understand that concept and I was not very really sure whether I will I'll be able to retain it after a few months. So I recorded and uh, tried to listen it whenever I was free. So Suppose by eating lunch as he said, so I didn't do that. So whenever I was walking around or probably like uh, just had like five minutes of break or something, I used to listen to that. Another thing that we used to do is uh, it, we used to play the section number game like suppose you've done a particular chapter or whatever, uh, just ask the other person like what section you want to report because then like you can hit it faster because you'll actually ask the other person and you've told another person the answer to it. So the next time you're actually doing it, you'll remember it much more better. So that's another way you can actually remember all the section numbers if you think that's a little harder to do. That's another relation that you can make to this. Um, other than that, case laws also, if you can actually apply it practically any of those case laws that are there and give an example, if you're talking to a person and you can be like, okay, this case law actually applies over there, that could be another way of remembering the case law name also. Uh, so uh, one of the techniques, or rather small thing which I followed was I always made my short notes in a color coded language. So basically the red, when you, whenever you see the red color, you automatically get alerted with the color. So if humans have a very unique uh, ability to ability, yeah, ability to have the uh, photographic memory. So what you, uh, so what you can do is. Uh, Whenever you are solving a question, so you can probably uh, check the section number whenever you are going wrong. So when you repeatedly check the section number suddenly, so it, when you are actually solving, so when you are actually solving that uh, three hours of exam paper, you remember that this was a section I didn't remember, and then I had seen a list of sections which you have prepared, and then you can recall it while you are writing the your paper. That was something which helped me. So, so some of the techniques that I used for uh, revision or you know, like the day before exam and all that stuff. When it comes to theory, we know the volume is like, I mean, it's too much to read at once, right? So how do you revise from a theory, for a theory paper? So if you are able to make separate notes, then that's not a good, like you have time. But I, we know that there is a constraint of time, right? So what I would do is, the first time when you are reading from a theory uh, book, then you start making margin notes. So if there is a huge paragraph, decide that there is some space, make note of the key words in that particular paragraph, right? So that way you complete your first chapter. Once you read the chapter, go back, just quickly revise from the margin notes, right? So let's say there is a 50 page chapter, you will be able to revise that in like 5 minutes and when you revise, 
when you go through those margin notes, see if you are able to recollect the entire content of that particular paragraph. If you are able to recollect, then that is sufficient. If you are not able to recollect, that means your margin notes is not sufficient. There is something else missing. So please read that chapter, in, I mean that particular paragraph immediately and add to your margin note. Right? So next time when you are revising, let's say after a month I am taking that particular subject for revision, what I do is I go through the heading, read the margin notes, try and recollect what is there in the paragraph. Am I able to recollect? Then good. Right? Go to the next paragraph. Else, if you are not following something or you are not able to completely recollect, then read the paragraph again. Right? That itself will become a revision. That is how you save time. That is how you, when you are writing the margin notes, it again registers better in your mind. Right? So that is how I prepare for my theory papers. When it comes to practical subjects, for, for theory papers, additionally what you have to do is you have to make your section summaries. Right? You chapter wise you have to make note of sections and then what it means case law summary. So these things are additionally you have to do. So next time when you are revising, you can quickly revise. Now this also helps, your margin notes also help, goes hand in hand with your picture memory, like what you were speaking of mind mapping and all that. So you know, he explained that, okay, this paragraph, this topic was coming in this part of the page. So when you reread from the same book, instead of going to a separate revision book, right, you, that gets registered again, that this particular topic is there here. Right? That's how you kind of remember better. That is for theory papers. When it comes to practical subjects, what I will do is, um, this is again a technique told by uh, Shekhizar himself, right? I was a student. So then, what, what I will do is, okay, you make a uh, important adjustment table, right? So any unique adjustment or a difficult adjustment you come across, you summarize it in a separate book. How do you summarize? Serial number, what the adjustment is, what's the treatment of that particular adjustment in the solution, and then decide that, make a note of which book you have taken from. Because we do a study material, practice manuals, RTP, suggestion, and a lot of books. So make a reference of which book your referring is from. So, so by doing this, what you do, like the, all the unique adjustments in the whole book is coming down to a, like four or five sheets of paper, right? So then when you are studying by revising, you, you know that there are certain problems that you will be repeating, right? In, those will be the normal problems which are repetitive or which are very important. Additionally, by revising, you might miss on those unique adjustments. There. That particular adjustment you came across only in one sum or some different adjustment. Those, all those adjustments are captured in your important adjustments notes, right? So when you revise from there, then you are covered with your uh, basic sums, techniques, concepts, all those things are covered. Additionally, the challenging ones or the different unique adjustments, those are also covered. That gives you a comprehensive coverage with a limited time available. This is the approach I use for practical papers. So guys, I am pretty sure you people would have noted like there are a lot of, uh, it may be visual aids or it may be a, a, a voice recording. Be anything for that matter, like whichever is comfortable to you, it, it just suits you, you are supposed to do it. Like it doesn't matter how, how weird or how unique it is. But did you people notice one small thing? Why uh, why did we actually ask these people how hard it is? How, how, how important is it to uh, do a hard work in the first question? And the second question was how smart you're supposed to. These are the smartest way of working hard. So that's a reason why we wanted to just reiterate the fact that it is it is not just about talking about hard work, but you are supposed to do it in your own unique way of smartness with your hard work. With that, like just for the uh, just for the audience benefit, like there's something called 80-20 rule, which where you get 80% results from just 20% of your hard work. So to ask about this, like. What are the things that uh, rank us would, uh, if you, do you people uh, follow this? Before that, I think uh, Shinovas yeah. want to talk I we are talking about so much about memory. I have to check with the rankers, uh, have you taken any food supplement or extra <laughs> thing for memory day, this thing? Because a lot of products is available. Do you suggest or uh, have you any of you tried? Yeah, it's rankers, it's open for you people. <laughs> <laughs> Reveal your secrets so that they can also <laughs> No one? Then you can go for the next question. So that means to say they were very natural and even you people can be natural. You don't need any supplements as such. But their only supplement for memory is revision, revision, revision. That is the only medicine they have taken. 
So, like, uh, just, just to get back to the point of 80-20 rule, like, did you people follow that 80-20 rule? Definitely, of course, then uh, uh, one thing which I kept myself and I did I kept myself motivated was uh, I I don't know if it works for everyone on uh, every subject, but what I did was I counted the number of pages in a particular subject and uh, of course go for the past exam weightage that first sheet on the practice manual and see how much marks have been asked on an average. So suppose there are 20 uh, pages in the book and they've been asked for a 5 marks, so 20 by 5 is 4. So for every 4 pages you read, you are earning a mark for yourself. So that is one way of keeping yourself motivated or deciding on what to focus on and what not to focus on. As uh, I think Abhishek said in the beginning, there will be meaning that uh, 10, 10 pages, 10 marks or 10 pages, 2 marks. So that is one, that is more or less the 80 20 rule. And to quantify it, it is always to divide the number of marks it generally asked with. I mean, the number of pages divided by the number of or something like that, something, some strategy which will quantify the impact of your, you reading that, that will help you to focus more on uh, this thing. Yeah. Uh, one more thing I want to say is that, see the first time in your study, study to know. Uh, forget what is the weightage, forget everything. Just just study to know because it's not that you are just going there to clear the exam. You also have to use it practically in your life. Maybe one question, one chapter which is really important for the exam might not be important in practical life. It's not that you are just coming out as a CA with the you know exam marks. You are also coming out as a CA who knows. So first try to know and then probably the second time in your study you can look at the weightage and then you can decide for yourself what is more important, what is not important. So don't just go by the 80-20 rule from the beginning because it's not only about the exam also. Uh, uh, to what he mentioned, right? Very very important to this that uh, in your first reading, do not follow this rule. Definitely it is a no because what happens is sometimes the institute might deviate from past tense or there might be a lot of unexpected changes. All the chapters which you think are for 18 is prepared really well. Some questions which you don't know, something which is more difficult or something which is unexpected might come up. Okay, so in, in those cases, it's always good to fall back on the other things which you get. Okay. So, how do you have to categorize your is that in your first teaching, there's no 80 20 rule, read everything. When you start with revision, is when you can start with this 80 20 rule. And probably give more importance to difficult chapters or chapters of more importance. But for the first thing that you mentioned, please do not uh, follow this rule. Oh, just adding on, until and unless you know the 100, how do you segregate what is 80, what is 20? So, at least for the first time, you have to read everything and then only can you start saying, okay, I, have, I know the subject now, now I can start saying this is not important. So, don't do it the first time. Uh, I completely agree with Mehul and Abhishek because what I did was I divided my study into two phases. First phase was the initial in depth study where I didn't skip any uh, chapter, any concept. So, I had this 100 percent coverage. In the second phase, since I was, I knew what is there in the syllabus, I was able to allot, I was able to know what is more important and what is less important, what is vital, essential and what is less desirable. So, in the, so even in the second phase, I had two rounds of revision. The first round of revision, I did completely and the second round, that is the last 10 days when I had for the exams, that is when I applied the 80 20 rule, where I tried to focus mostly on those concepts that uh, earn me uh, most weightage based on the past paper analysis. Uh, just like what they said, focus on 100% and only in your second uh, reading or third reading, go for the 80 20 One more point to add is that the day before the exam, don't try to apply the 80 20 Try to do everything. I will give you why. Because uh, if at all you do 80 20 you are entering the exam hall thinking, I know only 80 because the 20 you might not have done. Because even in your revisions, you wouldn't have done. So you would have done it 5 months ago and then just going for the exam. So the 20 is almost like a zero now. In case that comes, you are already like, what if that comes, right? You are already in that mode that, what if questions come from the 20? So, you are already down on confidence, low on confidence. That will make you blank out in the exam. Because if in case you see that one question from the 20 that you left out, 
you're blanked out. After that, it's just gone for a toss. So don't try to do the uh, the day before the exam. I'm not saying do 100% like completely, but don't try to be so strict with the AD20. Don't let anything go the day before the exam. Is there any rank award to take on this AD20 route other than that? I have a different uh, question for rankers or initial preparation. Whether you want to take uh, difficult subjects first or easy ones first. <laughs> because generally what happens, what I see, no? Generally difficult subject you, you want to touch it in the last moment. If you study everything, last moment you take some like information, declare something, you will get stuck up and they will postpone our exam also. That's why I want to uh, take suggestions from rankers. So what is difficult, what is easy, again depends on you. What I did was, I started simultaneously. So since I knew that ISKA was probably not my cup of tea, what I did was I started with two hours of ISKA every day for my five months of exam. Day. And the rest of the day I focused, I started off with something that I am good at, like probably analytics, something like FR, which is number crunching. So I started off with FR and costing, but simultaneously I had ISKA with me every day. So you should simultaneously try to incorporate both your difficult as well as easy subject because easy subject will push you, will give you enthusiasm and motivation but difficult subject will again pull you back and uh, make you grounded. That's the thing. And uh, I want to ask one more question uh, like uh, how many subjects in a day we should cover? One, two or three subjects? How are it is like sandwich uh, morning, early morning sir? like uh, income tax and uh, afterwards uh, practical again theory we have to do like sandwich technique also here? Yeah? Sir, I think both questions that you ask is a matter of personal choice uh, some people might want to start with the easy ones because they will feel that okay I am done with that I don't have to look at it again or some people would want to do hard uh, chapters or hard uh, uh, subjects first because they would want to you know get done with it uh, but again, it's a personal choice. You should probably understand yourself to realize what you want to do. But as a matter of just one quick suggestion, uh, what I wanted to, or uh, what I did was, practical subjects is more on concepts, right? Like you don't have to remember too much. So you would want to place it in the beginning so that you don't have to really remember so much. Imagine you have learned something day one, that is five months ago, and if you do it again later, you will forget it, but concepts you don't forget it. So probably you can push the theory subjects later on so that there is more to remember in the theory subjects than in the practical subjects. So that might be one of the ways that you can uh, go ahead with it. Uh, again, coming back to the other question on should I do 2-3 subjects a day or should I just do one subject? Again, it's a personal choice. So if you think you would want the variety every day, you would want to do 2-3 uh, subjects. Or if you think I can handle just doing one subject at a stretch and completing it, you can do that as well. So there is no right or wrong in this. Some of my friends followed this technique. I didn't, but some of my friends it really worked for them. Where in morning they did A's and then the uh, rest of the day they took up some other subject and end of the day they took up one essay. So that's how they were able to complete essay A's and the other subjects simultaneously. Right. So I'm going to combine both of Sir's questions. So we know our exam gave us for a long period, right? At least for CA panel we get 4 months and then for ICC you get around 2 months. So you need to have your energy up every single day. I mean you will have good days and bad days. So there are tough subjects, there are easy subjects. And there are subjects you like which might be tough and vice versa. So what you need to do is split your day or a suggestion. So for example, you like one subject, do it. So you will get through it faster. And then there's another subject that you find really hard. So spend the other part of your day on that subject. So half of the day your spirits are up, you build up your energy and the other half you have the energy to put in that extra effort for the subject that you find difficult. Right? So it's both a, both a combination of mixing up subjects as well as what you like and don't like. And one more thing is don't split up your groups. I mean a lot of you do have only one group left. But for those who have both the groups, don't say I will do group one first and do then do group two. And then in the end you'll make a decision saying okay I don't want to do this the group that is, that's left behind. So mix up your subjects where you're in a position to be like okay I neither here nor there. In the end you end up taking both groups which will be an advantage to you so you get through both the groups at a time. <coughs> Like 
her friends did, you know, one essay, one AS per day. Uh, I always believe that every chapter has a link to the later chapters. So imagine you do one essay today and then you do another essay tomorrow, you might have forgotten what is there in the first essay. So that might not be, I would personally not prefer that precisely because it might not give you that ability to think and analytically just link the uh, you know chapters and also especially in audit uh, where every question you would want to quote at least two or three essays right and it has to be linked and if you are doing one essay now and then one essay sometime later you might not have the ability to link because you might have forgotten the concept of the first essay so again though it's a personal choice this is just a suggestion because uh, it's not just that you are learning the subject or an essay individually you are learning it as a whole I have one more question. Uh, how you will be occupied? I mean, uh, how many hours will engage one or two days before the exam and in between the exams? That uh, technique, please. Sir. Any suggestions on that? Alright, so during the exam, sleep is very important because you need your energy for those three hours. And yes, we have so much to finish where even if we stay up for two days, we won't get through it. So that sleep will be your advantage. So one day for the exam, there's nothing new you can learn. So basically you have to flip through your pages of 600 pages or your notes or whatever. So in addition to the hours you put into studying, you need to ensure you get at least 6 to 7 hours of sleep. I know this might seem like an ideal situation, but I think this is what helps a lot. One very important thing is once you are done with the paper, don't stay in that centre, just come to home. Don't discuss the paper with anyone else because that what is done is done. So you have written the paper for three hours, now you can't go back and change it, right? What is the whole point of discussing? You will get the suggested answer after a few months and then look at the suggested answers if you really want to know whether you are right or wrong. Please don't stay at the centre and discuss. This is my personal like suggestion which I would like to give. Go back home. I used to get half an hour of sleep. Once I go back home, I used to keep that paper, whatever is done, I used to not try not to look at the answers, keep it separately into the cupboard, lock it up, not look at it again. Sleep for half an hour and then start. It so happened after my audit paper that I somehow my spirits were down and one hour I was full down. I, I spoke to my mother because she is my de stressor. So I spoke to her, again my spirits rise up and Start off with the next subject because that one and a half days is crucial for you to forget the side effects of the previous paper and also to get accustomed to the next paper. So you have to forget whatever is done and then proceed with the next paper. And uh, whatever you need to put forth in the one and a half days, plan it well ahead. Like when it comes to law, what I did was I planned out since there were 10 acts in allied laws, I did hourly allocation as to how much hour is required for each of the act. So I had 3 fourth day for company law and 3 fourth day for allied law. For each of the act, I knew how much time to allocate. So I was comfortably able to finish it uh, that way, uh, previous day. Uh, so there are two kinds of people, right? One who study only in the night, one who study only in the morning. So I would talk, so I am a person who studies only in the night. So I can talk in that way. So I would probably come home come home and sleep because the day before, that is the exam day, I wouldn't have really gotten any sleep. Like probably I would have got like 2 hours or 3 hours of sleep. But you have to like, so one technique that I probably did was, I prepared myself to have only 3-4 hours of sleep. Like probably when I was studying during the 5, five months, here and there, 1 or 2 days I would probably not sleep, probably just sleep 4 hours, so that my, I know how it feels to not get that enough sleep. So you know what to do when you, when you are feeling that way, to just rise up, right? So I would come home, sleep for some time, wake up, you know, 12, 1 in the night, and study the entire night and sleep in the morning again. So it works the other way, you come home, you study, if you are a morning person, study, sleep at 12, 1, wake up in the morning and do it. And my personal preference was the day of the exam, though we, you know, we write the exams at 2 o'clock, right? The day of the exam, I wouldn't want to keep anything pending. When I wake up, I would just want to wake up, get ready and go to the exam centre. But that is for a, that works well for a night person, but if it's a morning person, you will still have some bit left for the day of the exam. I personally did not want to uh, have that pressure of, you know, saying I have to wake up and study something. I just wanted to go right and come back. 
No, I did not want that added pressure on the uh, exam day. So again, it works. Personal preference. Uh, you can figure out what you want to do. But I think uh, I'm not really sure if you can really manage to take this as a speed the day before the exam, considering CA final, uh, uh, you know, syllabus. So probably the other way to look at it is prepare yourself to get four hours of sleep. And prepare yourself for six hours of sleep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, so, since uh, because of her uh, uh, because of her schedule, uh, which is not uh, suiting our timing, like she has to leave, the Bavi has to leave. Like uh, I would request uh, Chandrasekhar or uh, Shri to. Oh, give a momento. So to resume with the questions that we used to discuss with the rankers, so. Uh, it, it's always important to believe in CA, right? Like, it, without believing, I'm pretty sure none of you, uh, you people would have sat here. So, how, uh, like, how, what motivated you people to believe in CA? And what, what is the thing that you people actually believe in CA? So, that made you people secure. Yeah, anyone, anyone want to have uh, See, believing in CA in the sense, like, what? That you will become a CA or you want to be a CA? Yeah, you want to be a CA. Becoming a CA or if you want to be a CA, both is CA. Okay. Uh, see, yeah. there are two ways. Like, one is that you can believe that you will be a CA. One is that you want to be a CA. Right? If you want to be a CA, it should come out of personal preference. It can't be imposed on you. It can't be that uh, I took commerce in 12, so I have no choice. There is no other course, I'll go CA. You should be internally motivated to say, I want those two letters behind my name. And that is what this is going to give that edge. Because you are internally motivated. You don't have to look at others or your parents don't have to push you to study. If, if you really want to be a CA, you will do anything to get it. The same way, if you really want to do something, like if you really want to go play, you will do it. The same way, if you really want to be a CA, you will do everything possible to do it. So, if at all you say, you know, my parents pushed me into it, then you'd have to rethink, right? If you really want to be a CA. The other is, if you can, if you believe that you can be a CA, why, why do you think that you can't believe that you can't be a CA? Like, did you ever think in 10th or 12th that you will not clear? In the first attempt? No, right? So, why think now? So it's just a, another exam, right? So don't think that, okay, you know, everybody says CA, yeah, full form has come again, so, you know, we keep coming again. Don't think that there is another attempt. Think this is the only attempt, like how you thought about it in 12th or 10th. And you guys aced it there. So you can do it here also. So I'm a kind of person for whom negative motivation works a lot. As in if somebody says you can't, I want to prove them wrong and uh, I have the search to show that I can. So for me, when I started off with CA, everything was smooth until IPCC and when I went through artificial, a few instances which fueled my enthusiasm and when I had like a one year before my attempt, uh, what I did was I wrote down this on a piece of paper, like remember May 2018, remember exams are approaching, you need to clear with an app. These were my exact words that I wrote. I stuck this piece of paper on my cupboard, every day when I entered my room, I had this staring at me. So it was like, those words used to keep staring at me. Whenever I felt complacent, all I had to do was look at those words. It kept me motivated. It was completely self -built. And trust me, once the results are out, once you write mission accomplished on that piece of paper, the kind of joy that you get, it's indescriptional. <laughs> Up, so I clicked the photo, sent everyone, see I did it. Because when I wrote, I didn't want to share it to anyone since people might have doubts. So you have to believe in yourself. So that, that was my passion towards this profession. I wanted to be a CA by May 2018. I wanted to clear that attempt. So with the rank, I wrote down. You can use one technique called auto suggestions every day, morning, evening, whenever you're alone, and your mind is calm, you should say yourself whatever you want to achieve. 
you suggest auto suggestion you start giving yes i am ca yes i can do it that auto suggestion will help you a lot I would say that two uh, two quick points. Huh? First thing is, this is such a course which cannot be completed without conviction and determination. Okay, so the fact that all of us have chosen this and wanted to do this is because we are ready to sacrifice, put that extra effort, and be on the other side that we think you know is what we want to do in life. Okay, so with that having that thought in mind itself is the first step. Okay, without which you cannot proceed. And once you have that thought in place, the only thing that you have to do is prioritize. Okay, so while you are going through this entire journey of say three, four years, a lot of things will come in your way, which you know some things might seem more attractive for that instance. But if you are sure that in the long run aspect, this is what you want over all those other things with the short term gains, uh, or keeping the short term gains aside, then you'll be very clear that there will be nothing to stop it. So even if you are letting go of something, you will not regret it because you know that at the end of these three, four years, I'll be somewhere that I see myself, I want to be there, and that that. Thought itself is enough to motivate you for the next three, four years, and you know to, to highlight or to capitalize this entire thing. One of our teachers on this solar in class said, "You know, give us a score, and the score goes like, if you think you can, you can. That's all about it. Like that's the entire summary of this entire course. Like, if you think you can, you can. There's no one who will stop you. There's nothing that will stop you. In fact, because you know that you want to do it and you can do it. That's how it should be. Also, that." With a lot of my friends, I've seen that you know once they enter articleship, they feel maybe this is not the course for me. Like this is not I want what I want to do in life. Don't get such thoughts at all because once you are a CA, the opportunities that open up you will not have ever imagined. Trust me on this. Like once you clear and come out and be here, you will realize that you have so many opportunities. What you did in articleship is something very 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 small. You want to do something else? You have that that brand with you to take you through that. So don't think what you do in articleship is what you will end up doing in your life. It might be something different. This is a gateway to that. Don't think this is the end. This is just the beginning. So don't get demotivated during your articleship. You know what? I don't want to be filing returns. I don't want to be doing this. I don't want to be doing that. That is that that is that should not be a thought at all. So I think what we are all getting at is being positive plays a major role, whether it is through negative motivation or self belief of where you want to be, right? So coming at it from the exam perspective and apart from definitely one of your CA. So imagine you put in the efforts for these six months, and you don't have to put in the efforts for the rest of your life, right? Like these six months is going to be hard from the exam perspective, but later on you are a CA and the world is yours, India is yours. Like your now the your opportunities are innumerable. You can get to any field that you want to. So just keep that in mind. So can we can we uh, sum it up saying like external factors are very less comparatively your inner, internal motivation that will always keep saying you that yeah you want to be a CA. So with that like there is one small research by Harvard Business School which talks about external motivations. Where your mom keeps saying that you want to be a CA man, like your friend keeps saying like, hey, let's let's become a CA. Those external factors, single external factor, can't motivate you more than once itself. Like those external factors, as she said, like she had written it on on the wall saying like that that is an external factor. But whenever she saw that, that always motivated her once. Like every day she used to see thrice, she used to get motivated thrice. So that's a research which talks about getting externally motivated. But you should always have the discipline to get externally motivated. But your internal motivations is, as they all pointed out, that is that that, that is uh, that is equal to the infinity. And with that, like let let me ask you, like my mom always makes sure, like whenever I'm studying for my exams, she always says my dad or anyone, like just switch it off the TV, like he is studying. Like there is, I uh, honestly speaking, there is, uh, I, I'm not getting distracted, but still, she always makes sure there is an environment, there is a proper environment for my studies. How important was your environment for your studies? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, one incident uh, during my exams, I had a performance. So uh, there were the, the, that was a small open mind which was taking place. So my parents are very supportive to whatever I do. So my mom was usual mom is how they worry that नहीं यार पढ़ ले कुछ बन जाएगा कुछ हो जाएगा नहीं तो पास फेल हो जाएगा. Then my dad was like uh, then my dad argumented that he was like 
पूरे साल पढ़ा तो एक दिन में कुछ नहीं होने वाला नहीं पढ़ा तो भी नहीं होगा तो जाने दे सकते सो ऑलवेज दैट कॉन्स्टेंट सपोर्ट फ्रॉम पेरेंट्स ना मोटिवेट्स यू एंड यू डोंट हैव टू लाइक दिस ड्यूरिंग द एग्जाम्स एंड बिफोर योर एग्जाम्स एट लीस्ट सेवेन आवर्स लाइक नॉट ड्यूरिंग द एग्जाम बट बिफोर योर एग्जाम्स सेवेन आवर्स ऑफ स्लीप आई फील इज एसेंशियल फॉर यू एंड ऑल्सो प्रॉब्ली अ वॉक और प्रॉब्ली योर डूइंग वॉट एवर लाइक यू लाइक लिजन टू म्यूजिक और गो फ्री फॉर बट यू हैव टू लिमिट एवरीथिंग टू एन एक्सटेंट Overload of everything is bad, and you don't have to take C A all over you. मतलब C A C A C A मतलब कुछ नहीं होने वाला है. You have to divert your mind. You have your personal life as well. Yes, you have to clear this, but at the same time, your personal life also matters. So focus on that as well. So speaking about environment, like so during my C P K, I was in a P G. So there, uh, CPK I could manage that. Like in my next room, there are people playing loud music. There, they are playing cards. So you like still like CPK is manageable. So for IPCC, me and my friend like we thought like we ordered books, we kept in a PG room. Then we realized there's only place to walk only. So all we covered with books only. So then we thought like it's not possible. So let's just move to a better environment. We just moved into a flat. Then once we moved into a flat. Like that environment, like we both we are just studying over there. That also like it was like kind of dull. So then we moved like not moved meaning we just started talking like talking to we used to do before also like actually like uh, watching movies like night. So there's like a time for everything. So you keep a time for study, you only study that. Keep a time for enjoyment, you only enjoy. So you create like a mixed environment so that you know it pushes you to study even further. Uh, talking about environment, it should be such that like you should be so motivated, you should be so focused. Whatever is happening, it shouldn't bother you. Like let whatever happen. Like you know, during my exams there was IPL going on, and I loved it. So these kind of things keep happening. Like probably the next you know 2019 you will have this Lok Sabha election. You know, if that all you are uh, really interested in politics. You'll be interested in that. So it's just you know just think of it like five months now for the rest of the fifty years. Just think about that, right? It's okay. Next IPL will come. Next election will come. Next something else will come. But your first attempt or whichever attempt that you're writing will never come back. That will always impact you. So don't don't let the environment bother you. If at all you think uh, you know the environment is bothering you, then there is something wrong with you also. Because you are not that motivated, you are not that confident. If you are confident, you will know. Okay, you know what? I can watch the IPL today, and I will still clear. You will have that sense. But if at all you think, you know what? Anyway, I won't clear. Let me just watch IPL. Then there is something wrong. Don't let that happen. Don't be in that position where environment is bothering you. That brings me to a point where I need to ask you people: What kind of sacrifices that you people do? Like as I said, he he loves to be in politics. Like he wants he wants all information about politics, but he sacrifices for five months. Like what kind of such sacrifices that you people make? So firstly, I am uh, a voracious novel reader. So I used to read like a novel per week. So it used to be like that. So but since I started off my CA journey, I realized like day by day the kind of time allotted to that novel reading, I was unable to manage it. And I had to sacrifice the joys of reading that I got from the fictional novels. And secondly, I used to go to Carnatic music classes, but I had to discontinue because I was not able to fit in uh, between my schedule of morning classes and then articleship and then I had evening college to go. So that's how I couldn't. But these are small sacrifices. Anyways, one C is done again. Anyways, you have only job to focus on. You can pursue this accordingly, right? So it's just short term sacrifices. It's okay. You can just. Carry on with your interest. You can sometimes even weekends you can pursue it. You can weekend. You can even sing a song if you. I used to sometimes sing a song if I feel really bored. But you can pursue your interest later on. It's just a short span of time that uh, stays between you and your interests. That is the kind of sacrifice I did. And probably my friends they were mostly into this engineering and everything. And they used to say five months of exam. We we study like for one week or so. And you really need five months of exam. Yeah, that's your top ten. 
Did, this is not like other courses, see, so I had a lot of time explaining them. So you have a lot of distractions and you tend to sacrifice your social life sometimes. But then it is worth it, definitely. Uh, I think the word sacrifice itself is wrong. Like, you're using the word sacrifice in a very long context when you talk about CA itself. And why I say that is because uh, sacrifice is really something which you're losing out on, okay? But I think as a part of the profession that we've chosen on, because exams are priority for that moment, it's not that you're losing out on something. You lose out on something when you have to choose one of the other, like, out of, out of the alternatives or the other. But when you have an exam in mind and you have a goal set, your only option is to study. So the entire concept of sacrifice itself doesn't arise. Because the minute we start using the word sacrifice, we start taking the negative thoughts to ourselves. You know that I sacrifice this for my exam, what if I don't clear? I sacrifice this, what if I don't clear? And that's why you know the pressure keeps adding on yourself. But when you when you take it in such a way that you know all these options never existed for me, my only option was exam, which I have to work on then you know you will never feel bad about it or anything and it will be much easier for you to move on also. Otherwise even though you might have you know, uh, let go of a movie for one instance and probably chosen to study, you will still keep thinking about it because in your mind it's a sacrifice. Why? Technically it's not. Okay, so how you deal with your mind is very important and uh, I think that's why that sacrifice also is this thing. Yeah, just I don't want to be hooked but I think it's just that you don't have a choice. This is what you have to do. You have signed up for it, you are going to do it. Where is the question of sacrifice? Because this was, this is your job. This is the thing that you have to do right now. So there is nothing else that, you know, should, where you would say, I sacrifice. And also one more thing is, don't tell me that you don't have so much time. Like, it's not that you guys study 24 hours. Right? If at all you want to watch one movie, it's not that you would watch a movie the day before the exam, right? Obviously not. Probably, when you know you just start with your uh, exam leave, it's not that you are going to not go meet your friends for five months, not going to watch movie for five months, not going to go out to eat for five months. It's just that one, probably one one and a half months where you are purely focused, and the rest of the time you still have a lot of time. It's not that you are studying for sixteen hours and sleeping for eight hours, and that's about it. Nothing else. And you would probably start studying for like four hours, eight hours. So you have the rest of the day. Don't tell me that 24 hours is not enough. It's just that how you prioritize what you want to do. And if you're prioritizing something other than CA exams at that point in time, then your priorities are wrong. It's not that you're sacrificing. Yeah, uh, so as he rightly said that it's not all about sacrifices, it's about priorities, what you line up. So my family, my home culture is usually, like my mom is like an HR. Whenever she wants some work done, but leave it uh, do this, do that, you will become successful. But dad, like, that cruel manager, hey, logo ko padne ko nahi milta, to padne le, 50,000 fees bari. Like that they say, and that time, because you needed that motivation to study, that when you were small kids, but now you have grown up so much that now you have a priority state. If you want to do CA, you do it. Because no one's going to back up. You're making your own life decision. It's your future which is going to be built by what decisions you make right now. Due to time constraint, I would ask each panelist, each rank holders to give one takeaway that you want to reiterate that what we spoke or there's something that we have left out as a questionnaire that you want to give a point. Like I would request each and every one, each and every rank holder to give a takeaway. Alright, talking about sacrifice, we're just looking at what we would be doing for six months. But what are you getting in return of not meeting your friends once a week? You're getting, you're going to become a chartered accountant. So look at the plus side rather than saying, oh my god, I didn't meet my friends, I didn't go for a movie, I didn't do this, I didn't do that. But what are you doing now that's going to get you so much more? Right? You're going to be a chartered accountant. So, to give a personal example for me, uh, everyone would say like sacrifice, some things are more important than any, uh, while you are giving an example, you might have a lot of personal problems going on or there might be some issues that are going on. So for me, who is my brother's engagement that's happening, there was about like say about a hundred people at home and it was one month before the exam. So for me, it was to realize that what is important to me right now, how do I move ahead rather than just focus only on his engagement and lose out on five whole days of studying because I'll have to move on to another attempt. So
So that's a small sacrifice that you have to make that no one else is going to understand because of the state that you are in and they are not in that place as you are. So what you have to do is the, uh, focus on whatever your priorities are, right? At that moment it will be to the CA. And the best part is once you actually come out of it and you've cleared your exam, it proves everyone else wrong saying that these sacrifices were worth it than anything else. So that would be a point that I would have to put that even if you're making the sacrifices, it's always worth it. To sum up whatever I wanted to say, uh, one is smart work, uh, try to get the concepts right. Second thing is be internally motivated and you're not just going to write the exam, you're also preparing for it. The five months you should prepare your mind, body and your knowledge base to ensure that you can handle the 15 days. So prepare yourself that way, think of it that for that 15 days what all you will have to do, sleep, eat, everything else, right? So you have to prepare yourself for the exam. It's not just studying. It's also a lot to do with the mind. Prepare your mind that way. So, some of four points I would like to reiterate. Firstly, self-awareness. Be aware of your strengths and weaknesses. Know your flaws. Accept your flaws and work upon them. Secondly, believe yourself. Believe in the law of attraction. That is, if your thoughts are powerful enough, it will happen. Provided sufficient efforts are, it is backed up by sufficient efforts. Thirdly, stop comparing and stop complaining about things. You are unique, you are not comparable to anyone else. And for the most importantly, you need to be positive, you need to have a long term goal as well as a short term goal. You will be able to do it. All the best friends. Start with the right conviction, determination. You have to do it and you know what you want to do. Stick to your timetable, have no preconceived notions about anything. People have told you courage and stuff like that, this, that, it doesn't matter because you've got it. You've got it to keep yourself. Start like completely on a clean slate without any preconceived notions. Be very observant while you're studying. Try to pick up things which you're taking too much time. Try to pick up things which you know you can do it easily when you're going wrong. These small, small things might will make huge incremental change in your overall course plan. Okay, so, uh, be very observant while you're doing that and a regular revision of practice. Whatever is applicable, most important, please stick to your plan and I think it should be uh, good to go. Uh, yeah, my personal experience is uh, in CPT I missed the rank by 2 marks. I mean, uh, that time it was something like I wanted to clear. So once I went between that part, I was not even bothered about not getting a rank. I missed it by 2 marks and I was like, okay, but we want to get back, I didn't get back. Coming to MCC again, I had no uh, set goal as such. So I missed it by 4 marks that time. I got in the rank. That time also I was like, I didn't want to get rank. I was like, no problem at all. Even in my first time, that one was very happy for my family or I felt healthy. And then I started believing in myself that I, I mean, after I was not, I never regretting for not having got a rank. I was regretting for not having wanted a rank. If I had wanted a rank, 4 marks is not, I mean, just the thought of you wanting to get a rank can definitely bring in that extra effort that, that um, put in the eligibility for you to get a rank. So in finals, I wanted, I mean, I was not too specific about the number, but I just wanted to get a rank. And today here I am sitting after getting a rank. So I think that extra thought of, I mean, having a particular target is what all makes a difference. Every one of us is equally capable, I mean, not equally, but is capable of getting a rank. How many of you really want to get a rank? If I ask you today right now, please raise your hand to really want it because I don't really know anyone who did not want to get a rank and who has got a rank. If the other way can happen, but whoever is a ranker has come, has worked towards getting a rank and not worked towards passing the exams. So first you have to be very determined to get a rank, that is one thing. And second is uh, every day one, one thing which I used to do before my sleep was to Ask the question to myself if I had justified myself towards my dream or my ambition. So it did not waste my time. Wasting can be again in my first year of art question, no studying is not a waste. Enjoying is the priority or maybe not your test. And as the time progresses, the seriousness level also should change or automatically change. So just keep yourself and ask, ask yourself, if not every night, at least once in a week or something, are you doing enough? to achieve your dream or to achieve whatever you want to be.
So and automatically the next day, if the answer today is a no, I mean no as in uh, you have you are not doing enough, then the next day automatically you start pushing yourself and the answer will become a yes someday, yes. So today we have heard like everybody and then we are all motivated, right? But then to keep it going, every day you need to be this much motivated. We cannot have sessions like this or somebody coming like coming and speaking about doing this, believing in yourself, right? So I think the most important thing is like once your belief is done, that you know that you are going to be a CA, to keep it constantly going, like every day you put in that much efforts and you know to uh, like as you approach your studies, how you plan your uh, exam, how you plan your studies, all this is very important. So I think it's important to uh, think of like after once you qualify, what is that you are going to get, right? So the, these six months or two months, whatever you are studying, you are going through is very little when you compare to what you are going to get after you qualify, and especially if you are getting a rank, the benefits are. I mean, the way the uh, industry looks at you is completely different. So think of what benefits you are going to reap after your these uh, few months of hard work and all of that is definitely worth right? So I am sure to see all of you as members in, your, in the very first attempt that if you wish to get a rank, start believing that you will get a rank and definitely I will meet you as a rank holder. Probably next time you are going to sit beside me, right? So all the best to all of you, do well. Yeah? Believe you can, definitely you can. Just focus on what you want to do and the direction in which you are putting in that place, all the best. A uh, small incident, I assume everyone has seen Tom and Jerry. So in, this, in that cartoon, always the Tom chases Jerry and Jerry wins, always he manages to escape from Tom. So why does always Jerry win? Because Jerry is running to save its life and that, is, that has become its purpose. But Tom is running for food because Jerry is its food and it's just a need of Tom and it's not a purpose. In the same way in our life, knowledge would be the purpose, need would be the marks. So run behind knowledge, trust me, marks, jhatmar ke teach hai ye. So I have a few important points would be like planning, so this would include your smart work. And planning basically it should include your revision strategy also, so like give ample amount of time for your revision. Then it's not like sacrifice, you should just stick to your goal. You have decided to become a CA, just stick to it, you'll become a CA, the audio will be best. The last point I want you all to take, uh, I hope he is uh, listening to all this versatile uh, personality rank holders. You can only say, yes I can. Yes, 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 yes I can. Yes, 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 yes I can. Still? Yes, 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 yes I can. Four. Just to conclude uh, my session, I would like to reiterate the fact about SWOT analysis. There is no substitute for hard work in a smart way. With that, I will hand it over to MC. Thank you. Thank you, Ranjan. I request the chief guest to share a few words of wisdom. Feeling hungry? Yes. Yes? yes. Be honest. Yes. yes. Okay. I'm sure you are talking about hunger for knowledge. <laughs> yeah? Fine. Okay, I'll not take more than five minutes. Just summarize what our friends have told. I totally agree with all the points what they have told. First one is about hard work and smart work. Smart work. We start with that. I put it in a different way. What is important? Efficiency or effectiveness? What do you think is important? Three hours exam completion is important or writing the quality answer is important? Both are important. Both are important. You say I know every answer perfectly, but give me ten hours to write that paper. No, no examiner is going to give you. Second point. At the same time, whatever you filled in there, you need to be qualitative ones. So, hard work is important and if you continuously do the hard work, smart work automatically comes. Point number one. It is not that overnight everybody has become smart. Okay. Swami Vivekananda has become Swami Vivekananda. It's just because of the hard work has put for hours together overnight. 
day and night he ran and over a period of time he became the what you call it internationally known personality. So you put the hard work, automatically this hard work comes. The first point. Second one is about planning. As I said in the inaugural uh, session also, planning is extremely important. You may not be able to stick to that, doesn't matter. Okay. So please put the plan. Two statements. A well planned job is half done. At the same time, if you just plan and if you don't implement the waste, today's generation what we say is, we put the brilliant planning, excellent. So when you start maybe uh, for the CA final students, when they start the artificial building, the IPCC and lift the rank, CA final should get the first rank. So this plan, but they start reading only last six months or one year. That's not going to work out. Now in your at this juncture it may not be right for you to think if you are writing in November 2018. But implement whatever the plan you A reasonably well implemented job is better than the best plan which never got kicked off. You make a beautiful plan, but if you don't implement, what do you use? It's absolutely rubbish. Third point is about all of us have attention about forgetting. How many of you remember everything of everything what you learnt? Anyone? Raise your hand. Then your photo will be somewhere in the next to God's photo. <laughs> so I always say forgetting a child. Don't bother about forgetting. Don't think too much about will I remember or not. You remember your name? How many times you revised your name today morning? You are not. It automatically comes. Don't bother too much about remembering, forgetting. It's a general discussion in every educational forum. Obviously you need to repeatedly do the things I understand, I accept it, but don't bother. What has to be remembered, you will remember. Compulsory. You remember your name, you remember your parents' name, you remember your friend, best friend's name. At the same time, when you educate your first standard, one of your friends should I meet you. Do you remember that? Normally no, we don't normally don't remember what happened. Think for a while you can remember. And somewhere today while walking out of the walking out and you meet that fellow. You have a girl child, you want to beat him. How, how ridiculous the life will be. So don't bother too much about the, whether I remember or not. As all of my friends have said, if you are read properly with a complete concentration, with a conceptual knowledge, page wise, para number wise, column wise, which side, everything will come. There is a picture memory or photographic memory or whatever. You call it the mind mapping, whatever. Automatically comes, you don't have to worry about it. But I, my personal experience, I am not intelligent. But I put the hard work throughout my education career, even today I am a student. And I know that when I consistently do the education, automatically, automatically, whatever I have studied is going to come. So don't worry about forgetting. Automatically things will come. Automatically, and for every one of you, maybe one of the previous sessions I had mentioned, all of us let's go to a movie, one particular movie. 99% of us would have understood the movie in the same way. Only one person probably would have been sleeping in the movie, you would have not understood, I understand. Otherwise, how is it happening then? All of us are understanding the movie in the same way, news in the same way, sports in the same way. How can the subject be different way? So please understand all of us are unique, just like everyone else. If you are remembering a child, if you are not able to remember also a child, but put your effort. As uh, she said, Karmane Vadikaraste, Mahaprish Kanachan. Put your effort, results Jakmar Kaya. And uh, five, I believe in five P's, five R's and five S. Five P's. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. So of saying all these things, put your effort, put your effort. Sir, I cannot sit continuously for two hours. No one under the sky can continuously concentrate for two hours while reading. No one under the sky, okay? I can challenge. But still you sit because if you sir, I cannot concentrate for two hours, every two minutes you get up and go, you will not be able to concentrate even for five minutes. So that's why fake it before make it. So sit, sit for two hours, continuously sit. Maybe it will be difficult, you are not so used to it, chalta hai. sit. But maybe after two hours, take a break, five, five, ten minutes, take a break. Don't do like, read for ten minutes, two hours break. That's, a, that, that, that's ridiculous. But do it. If you do it, 100% result jack mark hai. Then uh, five P's. Proper preparation prevents poor performance. Then about the memory, etc. Five hours. Read, repeat, retain, recall and reproduce. Omit in the exam. Read. You have repeatedly, many of them are asking, when I was doing psychology, I was just going through a beautiful session, it says, what you read once, it will be there only for one day. What you read for twice, it will be there for a week. If you read for three times, it will be there at least for six months to one year. That's why I suggest to all my friends, read whatever you read in the morning, let us say, morning to evening. Before going to sleep, evening, after hour you spend on that, 
At the end of the week, whatever you have done that whole week, just go through that once completely. Trust me, you will be able to remember. No doubt, you think you will forget, you are actually right. At least you remember that thinking that you will forget. That means your memory is all right. You understand? Yeah. And five years. So, keep it simple. Don't try it. I will high five or uh, technical knowledge, etc. Reasonably simple. Reasonably simple. Be smart. What smart? Each one of you are smart. Okay. Your smartness you continue the same way. Now, all our friends have told so many points. Do you think you can implement all the points? Next 10 gen also is not possible. That is not possible. Whatever I have told. See, 10 people have told something you would have liked it, something you would not have liked it. It's okay. Whatever you like, you please improve on it. Okay. One, what one point she told may suit me, what other point he told may suit him. So it doesn't matter. So obviously you have taken some point, all those points you try to improve on it. That's what's important. Keep simple, be smart, be sincere to yourself. Don't bother about hey, he's reading for 12 hours, I'll read for 14 hours. It's a waste. Okay. You're simply wasting your time. You be honest to yourself, be sincere. Surely success will come. Uh, she has taken a beautiful example of engineers. I always love this example. Engineers such a we read only for a week and uh, we actually we finish CA uh, sorry engineering exam like this. Have you come across any CA as a Ola or Uber driver? I have come across engineers as Ola driver. Example number one. Point number two, every year almost two lakh engineers get passed in India as for the statistics. Whereas from 1949 till date, we are only around 2 lakh child. So we are going to be a part of that population where from the 1949 till date, we are going to So obviously we need some extra effort. We need some. So we are going to be a little extra. They are ordinary, we are going to be extraordinary. With due respect to engineers, no doubt they are also required. Whereas we are going to be a little extra. So that's why we are going to put extra effort. That's why we are going to be extraordinary. Just to conclude, have a positive thinking. I always say the word enjoy. Someone is shouting at you, enjoy. Look at them and say, wow, Sakata Mukita Ramansha. <laughs> enjoy, because you are not going to lose anything by If you, like, this is what normally happens. You are going somewhere, two wheeler, someone shouts at you, you stop there and have a fight. That fellow arms and goes, whole day, you will be having a rent free accommodation about him in your mind. You keep on thinking, oh, you are you don't know that fellow, you may not meet that person in the Janma. But still you will be thinking, why? Simply if he, if he shouts at you, you say thank you, same to you. That's it. Or we are image, okay, but maintain the distance, depending upon the meeting. <laughs> so all the things you have. So, for positive thinking, I have a beautiful statement which says, assuming you are walking down the street, crow shits on you. You immediately say, thank God, cows won't fly. <laughs> it's okay, crow no, so If cows fly and if it shits so much of water, you are happy, be happy for it. And I lost a small incident. Uh, you will be, you know, most of you will be knowing this story. Brief, beautiful story. Whatever happens in life, just think that it happens for good. Everything in life happens for good. A king and a minister story, maybe some of you will be knowing. One day, king by mistake, when doing something, he broke his uh, finger. So immediately the minister was a firm believer of Bhagavad Gita. He said, everything in life happens for good. King was very furious. He has broken his finger, but the minister is saying what? Everything in life happens for good. So immediately king said, Do you put him behind the bus. He ordered that minister should be put behind the bus. And normally this king and minister used to go to forest for hunting, etc. Together. They were very close friends. But this time, minister is inside the jail. This fellow went alone. By mistake, he lost the route. There was no Google map also at that time. So he lost the route. And some forest people, they caught hold of this fellow. And they had a custom to whomever they meet, they take and they do, you give that person as a bali. You are aware of bali, they will what is called uh, kill him in front of their god. So the king was supposed to be killed. So they took, and they have a very good custom. They will make, uh, make proper decoration etc. to the person. When they are doing that, okay, they got to know that his finger is broken. And they had a custom that if there is a wound, they cannot uh, give him as a belly. They said, okay, go. So you are uh, released. So king's life was saved. Moment he came back to kingdom, he immediately told the order to release the minister. And uh, he said, had I not what you call broken my finger, my life would have gone. And on that day you said actually everything happened for good. So this also happened for good. Thankfully I saved my life. So immediately minister said that also happened for good only. Then king asked, okay you, fine, that at least my life is saved. But at least uh, you, have, you suffered in the jail for six months. He said that's also for good. Why? 
Had I not been audible check, I would have accompanied you and I don't have any mood, I would have lost my life. I would have lost my life. So, my dear friends, everything in life happens for you. Okay? So, if today we have some people thought I spent half a, half a day, so that's also for good. Okay? Exam only, exam paper is tough. Exam is, paper is tough, good. Easy, good. Everything they do, and as she said, one of our friends, when you come out of the exam hall, just forget the paper. Okay? Just forget the paper. You come out, anyone ask how the paper, reasonably good. That's the code word which I tell my friends. Say what? Reasonably good. Neither you have understood what you said, nor they have understood what you said. You come out, relax and chill. Okay? Forget about it and you are going to get a success. So, brilliant job by all the rank orders. Excellent. Because coming here and speaking is not an easy job. Especially being so young. Some of them are IPC. Terrific job. So, congratulations to Srinivas and his team also for a brilliant uh, program. And congratulations to all the FCS. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir, for the light-hearted words. Um, coming to the end of the session, uh, I, will, I hope all of you are recharged for the upcoming exam. I would like to take this opportunity to thank our rank holders for being a part of the session. And as a token of gratitude, we would like to give mementos to each of you. I now request um, the chief guest, Chandrasekhar Shetty. Um, to present memento to Deepak Acharya. <laughs> I also request sir to present memento to C. A. Priya K. I now request the energetic chairman of Sikasa, C.H. Srinivas sir, to present movement to C.A. Abhishek Mandraj. sharing their insights. 
I would also like to thank our chairman of Sikasa Bangalore, C.H. Rinua sir, for organizing this wonderful event. I would also like to thank the staff of Bangalore branch of SIRC for assisting in the event. I would also like to extend my gratitude to the energetic and enthusiastic participants. All the best for your exams. <laughs> Lastly, a event to be successful requires the efforts of the student committee of Sikasa. I would also like to thank them for assisting with the organization of event. Thank you everyone. Um, at this juncture, I would also like to tell you that after this we have a lot of Sikasa events after the exam. So please do be a part.